awesome and funny. I think he's awesome. I think he's awesome and funny too. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for coming this evening. My name is Scott Farnsworth. I'm the director of the recreation department here at Yavapai College. And obviously, I'm not Cody Lundeen. I've got shoes on. The partnership between Yavapai College and Cody Lundeen started back in 1997 when he joined our program as an adjunct instructor for survival skills. Since that time, his classes have been very, very successful. And we're here tonight as a testament to his uh, unique and special approach to that field of survival. Now, after we're done with the performance, there's going to be a question and answer period. Uh, we also have other displays out. We're going to have refreshments available for everyone. So we hope that you come, enjoy yourself, able to visit with one another, visit with our exhibitors, and have an enjoyable evening. So ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to watch the screening of Dual Survivor. Lost in the swamp and searching for civilization. A scenario two of America's top survival experts, Cody Lundin and Dave Canterbury, will experience firsthand. Yep. I mean, we need to start probably, as much as I hate to say this, but hunkering down. I've never said that before, needing water. Dave and I would not be looking at this fire situation in this environment if it wasn't for that modern way to make fire. It's in most camping stores all over the United States. Pretty powerful tool. Some of these worms are really, really small. Take one, pass it down. Take one. Yeah, just go ahead. My hands have been sterile, so don't worry about that. Just, just share if you don't. You guys can kind of share. All right, go ahead, pop them in. Pop them in, chew them up. All right. Who's got the, who's got the chocolate covered ones? All right, how's it taste? Just really good. Okay, thank you. You had white chocolate? How did that taste? Really good. Okay. All right. No, we don't have any more, sorry. Okay. What did you think? Um, I get one. There's some in there. Go ahead. Just, just pop them back. Oh, the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. Yes. Chew it, chew it up. What's it taste like? Good. Good. All right. Thank you. Cricket. Uh, I ate worms. I ate a cricket. I ate a worm and it was it wasn't bad at all. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the co-star of Bill Survivor, Cody Lundin. Hey, so a lot of people uh, did a lot of work to put this on, pretty overwhelming, um, very intense. But uh, I thank them and also there's a maroon Honda Element with its lights on in the parking lot. <laughs> AKS7178 is your license plate. Do not do that in the woods. <laughs> so go turn off your lights. We only have 20 minutes, so um, I don't know where the microphones are for questions, but uh, let's do it, if you have any. The dugout canoe is probably a planter in someone's yard with flowers. So yeah, uh, that sucked. Is there, are these mics ready here? Is that one of the mics? Yeah. How much do I bench? I don't know, you know? <laughs> it's how you lift, not what you lift. How much does it take to eat? You need to remember this is a produced television show. 
okay, but food is not a priority in survival. The piranhas there were plentiful, they were easy to catch, and a lot of fun to catch. You know, because I was making noise in the water, and uh, uh, of course we have a guide to help us into certain areas, and I was like, well, I, I better be quiet, you know, because I grew up fishing. And he says, no, 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 make as much noise as you can, they'll think something's dying, and they will come there. So how can you beat that for fishing, right? You just make a noise and get the fish and do it. So let's just, uh, whatever you guys want to do. Um, I was wondering, um, how long have you um, had your bear claws? These are mountain lion, and they were given to me by a friend, and I've been wearing them for about four years straight. Oh. And um, I was also wondering, um, in your book, you said um, it's bad to eat ice in um, a cold environment. What if you were in a desert environment and eating ice? If you have ice in a desert environment, I want to go to that desert. You know, so you're home, the cooler's there, you just have a real bad buzz, you know, and you're already, it's, everything's cool. So, I mean, think about that, you know, because hyperthermia is what kills you in the desert, a high body temperature, and if you have ice, that shouldn't be an issue, or there's a cooler right here and a beautiful woman right there. <laughs> Next question. Out of all your survival movies, like, which one was the hardest one to create? Peru, because uh, I was very sick in Peru, and... Um, I, I can't get into too many details about that, but doing this, even though it's a produced television show, while well, you're puking sucks. So that, that was the worst for me physically. How many days did it take to make this episode? It was like three days you know, through the time we watched, but uh, it was longer than that one. It? it was longer than that, and there's certain things I can say and certain things I can't, but it's longer than the three days to produce that show. It's, we shoot for longer than three days to get it done. Because you have to remember there's a lot of logistical stuff that you don't see, you know, for certain angles. The helicopter can't make it because there's a blizzard or something like that. So there's all these things that, you know, compromise the mission per se. Why are you always barefoot? <laughs> Just to make people ask that question and piss them off. I like to stay barefoot because that's one of the things that they did to POWs when they took their shoes, when they were prisoners. And I, I like to be in contact with earth. I do wear sandals when I need to because of choya cactus or ground temperatures or certain restaurants that don't appreciate me walking in barefoot. <laughs> uh, but Fry's is great, Home Depot is great. Uh, the, the managers have all approved me going barefoot and I will patronize them forever. I want to, you know, this is a television show, okay? So there's a lot of young, impressionable minds out here. One of the nastiest things you can do in a survival situation is eat weird stuff. TV likes that because TV doesn't like to have the truth. Okay, so I would go out there and regulate your core body temperature first with clothing and water. And in a typical three-day scenario or 72 hours where they'll find you dead or alive, a statistical search and rescue scenario here in Arizona, you don't really need to eat. I'll, sh I'll share you a secret, look at this. There's plenty of stuff here to go through three days. So what you can put in your mouth can really put the hurt on you, and I've had that happen to me, and I don't want it to happen to you. The hell with TV, okay? Um, what does scorpion taste like? Hmm. Some of it tastes like a big booger. Not that I've, I can imagine it tastes like a booger. I don't, I'm not a booger eater, I never was. But it's a snotty, kind of slimy, kind of gross stuff that we did just because it would piss Dave off. What about rattlesnake? Rattlesnake is good. Everything tastes like chicken. You'll hear that, right? It's good. How do you, how do you feel about the Boy Scout group uh, of being ready for survival? I think training kids of any age, every, any gender is, should be mandatory, you know? Um, in urban survival, preparedness or whatever. So I have nothing but respect for the Scouts, anyone who has 
the Huevos to train in Lost Arts, which just a few generations ago. When I have some older folks in the audience during my lectures, they would say, hey, Cody, when I went to school, I would have to take a knife to recess when I went to school when I was a little boy. And I was like, well, why is that? He said, we were supposed to be whittling. Don't take your knife to school now. I'm not saying that. But you can see the mindset change of what, we're, what we've lost. For the older folks in here, they know what I'm talking about. We're losing a basic skill set, and it troubles me. You know, because as soon as that electrical grid goes down and the power turns off, you'll see what's really going on. You know, so the scouts are helping, I think, turn that around and always have by getting down and dirty, hands-on with some skills that matter. Um, what was your most favorite challenge you've ever done? On the show? Yeah. Ah, uh, that, I think you might have stumped me. Well, trying to keep up with the schedule, it was, was very challenging because we were shooting, I know that's a boring answer, but we shot per, from late December with a few breaks, clear up until June, and I was working in my, I mean, I do this for a living. I'm not a TV guy, I'm a survival instructor. That's my profession for over 20 years. So I had to keep my courses going while filming, and, and that was pretty hard on the body. I'm romantic, I know, sorry. <laughs> what was your scariest moment on camera and off camera, and are you signed up for season two yet? <laughs> repelling. I, I don't like repelling. <laughs> um, I don't like the feeling of my body falling. That's unnatural. That simulates death. I don't like it. I like this. So that was freaky for me, is to do the, re the repelling in New Zealand. And there's rumors of that. Nothing's been confirmed for season two. I have signed nothing. I'm a free man at this point. Why did Dave come up with the flipping the canoe over and making it into a raft? Why did he come up with that? <laughs> yeah. Has Dave paid you to come to this event? <laughs> because Dave's a really smart guy, and he's like a MacGyver guy, and so he had that idea. Was your last adventure more fun or scary? My last adventure was more fun because I love Brazil. I love Brazilian women. They're very pretty at the airports. <laughs> That was an adventure, going to the airport, looking at all these beautiful women. And it's, uh, the birds, the Cayman, all that was a very pretty country. I've always wanted to go there. But I was really excited because the show was over. Because at that point, I was really very tired. Did a predator ever approach your camp? Are you talking about Dave? No, like a jaguar or a snake or something? No, no, the production company gets there before us in some locations and they saw a jaguar out in the bush, but we never saw one. There's some people involved in this that you don't see on camera. Okay, so we're making noise and we're not very attractive to jaguars when, when there's more than just the two of us, you know, so. But they did see one and I wish I could have seen it, but I did not. wearing shoes, do you get like bit by bugs and stuff more often? Yes. <laughs> I get bit by bugs and I have a weird splinter pussy thing on my foot right now and yeah, my feet are uh, rough. So yeah, I get bit by bugs a lot. Why do you always have your hair in ponytails? <laughs> <laughs> Dave likes to pull on them every once in a while. So. What's, the most, what's the most disgusting thing you've ever eaten on the show? On the show? Uh, there was a nasty worm I ate in, uh, in New Zealand, but worms aren't, it was just, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've eaten some nasty stuff. And, you know, high school lunches, you know, growing up and, you know, different airport food, you know, so 
organic produce out in the wilderness is kind of a step above some of this stuff. But probably the worm. How long have you known Dave Canterbury, or how did you meet him? And uh, the other question is, uh, can you tell us something about your childhood? My child, my God, no. <laughs> Are you a shrink? Uh, Dave, I didn't know uh, who Dave was. I met him at, a, they call it a chemistry test, where they picked four people, military, and four wilderness, no, I was the only hippie there, but four wilderness people. And I went against them and won that round, and then they weren't quite convinced on Dave yet. They brought back three more people, military, special forces, and Dave. Then they had me go back again and train with four more guys. I went through 11 of them. And uh, Dave has a lot higher skill level because the military is not known for outdoor survival. Just like I don't teach my students here how to kill insurgents. That's not the mission. So they, we, I would E-9 Army Special Forces Commanders, Navy SEAL, Green Beret, Ranger, SEER instructor, they were looking all over the world to bring them in. And that, they needed to keep up because I'm not going to be with a slacker on TV because I'm damn good at what I do because it's what I do. I'm not going to touch the childhood question. I think being in a survival situation and going after something that can take you out is a bad idea. So yes, I wasn't very happy with Dave. So now I was a little bit upset. Could you tell? Uh, when you were in Cambodia and Dave made that cigarette filter and then he started drinking river water later on, how sick did he get? Uh, he didn't. Dave's done, Dave's done some sketchy stuff, and he didn't. The pathogens, the waterborne pathogens, bacteria, viruses, protozoa, and, and uh, uh, parasites that get people ill, you, you don't see them. And that's the problem with that. You're not going to take a cigarette filter where these pathogens are microns in size and have them do a damn bit of good. And I've argued that over and over again, and I always will. Water, we know how precious that is in our country. You don't want to mess around with it. It was Laos, and he did not get ill on that, um, and he's drank some nasty stuff, but no one's drank more nasty stuff than we have here in Arizona out in the back country, because you gotta drink it, and we all know how that is if you've been camping, but he was okay after that. Hey, Cody, uh, three questions. My son was wondering what your favorite wild food is. My favorite, my God. Um, I like fruits. Um, from the show, I just really don't even, I don't even It doesn't remember. have to be on the show. Saguaro fruit. And uh, another question that wouldn't have to be on the show, what was your most difficult survival situation? I think cold, well, shoot. Um, cold, well, I don't know if it was Nova Scotia with the cold or, um, I don't know how to answer that question. You know, cause off the show, what was your most difficult? Off the show, I've had some courses where we were very sick and required an evacuation. I mean, I do this stuff for real, off camera. And there's some scary stuff that I do in courses where I'm pushing the envelope and sometimes you break through. And that's just the way it is. And that's how real survival is. And no one should take that for granted. Again, it's a TV show, folks. You know, you don't take some of this stuff and go out in the backcountry. Never bet your life on a television show. I don't give a damn who's on the show. The, the last question is a Dave question. It seems like you guys actually got along most of the time, did you? Or is that Dave is very thing? sweet to me. He'll probably be pissed I use that word sweet. You know, but um, he's, he has a lot of respect for me. He knows my background. I'm like his little brother. And uh, I believe if we were in a bar fight, he'd definitely fight for me and kick some ass. What was your uh, first show made in? What was the first show what? Where was the first show took in place at? Nova Scotia, up in Canada. It was very cold. That was the first one that we shot in January of this year. Is that it? <laughs> when you guys shot your Arizona episode, where was that located at? Where was the we, shooting? We at? shot outside of Young, 
that little town, Young, just out in the bush, out, out in that part of Arizona. Beautiful, but it was cold, and they found that out real quick. You know, you don't come to the mountains in Arizona in uh, April and expect it to be all balmy. So, uh, we all know that, but they didn't. Ha ha, they're from New York City. <laughs> Um, I'm an only kid. I was in a military family. We moved around a lot. So nature was kind of my only companion. I've been doing more with less for a very long time. And I started as a hobby in town with all the summer camps. No one would hire me, teaching survival skills. I have my rejection letters from all the colleges in town, including Yavapai College. Save them. Save your rejection letters, you know, because you can do wallpaper later. But basically, if you have a dream, hopefully there's some YC students here or whoever, if you have something you're passionate about, don't let anyone sway you from it. Never. I have two questions. One is, do you wear shoes in the winter when it's snowy? I wear usually three pairs of non-threadbare wool socks. And I could explain the physiology, but it would be a little bit longer than we have time for. What's the second one? Are you, um, are you still friends with Dave? Yes, Dave and I are still on speaking terms. <laughs> I have two questions. One, where is Dave now? <laughs> Look, his name's not Waldo, dude. How the hell do I know what Dave is? Second one is, where was Dave born? Get this kid out of here. Like, one of your adventures, where do you guys go, like, do you go to eat, like a buffet or something? <laughs> I mentioned the Brazilian women, right, in the buffet? <laughs> No, we don't do any of that sort of stuff. It's, it's very busy, uh, yes, yes we eat, and uh, um, everything's kind of, you know, an airplane or whatever. I mean, we, we get to certain places before we shoot in a vehicle, you know, so um, when we're off, we eat, and we eat a lot. And I eat a lot before I go, and that's what I do. I'm teaching a course in the field the next two days, and I will eat a lot before I do that as well. Um, during the Louisiana swamp, um, how did you feel being barefoot, like with around the snakes? Yeah, that was the worst snake problem. The cottonmouths were just like ticks on a dog. So that was fairly uncomfortable for me. Um, but as long as I'm paying attention, which I'm used to paying attention, I don't recommend anyone doing that in Louisiana or pretty much any place else for that matter. But you have to look at the native peoples. I mean, a lot of them died probably because of that. But there is no knee-high boots, you know, way back when. So, but that was freaky, especially in the tall grass. And, and, and luckily, uh, I didn't get hurt, and, and no one else got hurt as well on that. Uh, like, I noticed on, one of, on some of your shows, Dave was more of a risk taker. Is there a reason for that? Dave is a risk taker, yeah. That's Dave's personality. I'm much more conservative. Um, you spend 20 years with students in the real backcountry doing real survival skills, you can't do that sort of stuff. Okay, that's not supporting life. One more question? I can't hear you. How many beaches has you been to? How many beaches? <laughs> like sandy beaches? <laughs> Probably a baker's dozen. <laughs> Maybe less. <laughs> Let's give Cody a big hand. Dirt cake. This is a big Cody Lundin fan. What's up? 
read his books? Mm -hmm. No, we're going to oh, get a no, book. Yeah. We watched his shows. But we're getting a book, huh? We like watching Cody. Sitting, it's a family show. It's all good. Is it all autographed? No, not yet. How are you doing? Great show. <laughs> Highlight of my summer. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. You have a real message. <clears throat> nice. Uh, I've been to Monica. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think Cody was as real as he always is. So I'll say that. Yeah, it was a fun night. Yeah, we've had a good time. I'm actually planning on taking his courses. My mom took his courses, so... Yeah. He's a really interesting, laid-back guy. I, I mean, it's awesome opportunity to see him again. Thank you for coming and say hi to Sarah. I just saw her daddy today. Sarah's awesome. Yeah. yeah. What do you got there? You're almost there. <laughs> I see it. The guy's the real deal. <laughs> Got my book. I'm signed it. What did he sign? What? Did he write something special? We came, we came prepared. <laughs> yeah. Say? Uh, stay. Yeah, look at this. Oh, Dylan, keep Stay alive. Dylan. Stay. No. I'm completely sure. <laughs> Just a fan, Cody and I went to school together at Prescott College. I do, I know some secrets. I gotta give him this Black Sabbath CD I made for him. I think it's there. Cody Landine who made this because of the pictures on the back. He wrote it. Yeah. The I think Cody Landine's right there. Yeah. It's the purple. Yeah, there he is. Oh, that this is Logan. Yeah. Come here. Come here, go on over. Nice job. Oh, yeah. What? Okay. One, two, 